the third <coughs> excuse me this is the third <coughs> this is the third video of three i'll end it in this third video but i'm making this video for uh, all the justices of the united states supreme court all the judges of the united states court of appeals for the fifth circuit i am seeking your permission to file a civil rights uh Lawsuits sounding in both habeas corpus and uh, violations of uh, rights uh, secured and protected by the United States Constitution and laws of the United States. The basis for asking for a uh, moving for permission. Now, I'm allowed to uh, file a lawsuit through an attorney. Just can't. I have to get permission to do so pro se. But because of attorneys are uh, with the state bar of Texas and the whole state government, the justices, because they know I'm now moving for the arrests. So you can see why attorneys will not uh, take my case, our case like this. We need help. So I'm asking each member of the United States Supreme Court and of the Fifth Circuit, please set aside any bias that you might have against me and please exercise empathy and understand they've taken my baby. They've taken my baby from me and they've committed uh, crimes and doing, they violated the United States Constitution. So I'm asking because, they, okay, I understand that I'm not a likable person. I get that. I get that. And I understand that you may forever want to whatever against me. I get that too. But I, I can't accept that. I can't accept my baby. I can't, t that's going to kill me. That's going to kill me. So I'm saying to the world, I don't know. No, I don't have to please come up. I'm found dead because and then they no, this is killing me. I'm telling you, no, I'm not. OK, I'm asking and I'm going to call the clerk and let Mr. Jeff Atkins and I'll let the clerk of the Fifth Circuit know that I've made the videos. I'll tell you because evidently my writing skills are bad, but I'm able to talk better. I'm able to go to a topic and I'll stick to this topic, but I'm asking you to grant me each justice, not just one or two, but each justice and each judge of this court to grant me permission to file a habeas corpus and a civil rights uh, action based upon conduct that occurred in with Judge Melinda Harmon. She's committed crimes. Give me an opportunity. Please. I, people don't want to give me an opportunity to prove what I allege. I believe in alleging and proving, not supporting with evidence, but proving. Now, with respect, I, there's a video. I went on a food and water strike after they took my baby. Judge John Phillips and CPS kept having me arrested kept having me arrested through the parole uh, agency, a sister agency. So while on a food and water strike in the county jail, I think it was 10 days, the sheriff's department transferred me over to the same hospital, the very hospital that caused the, where the false report of child abuse was filed in the first place. So at this time, pursuant to Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 10C, I adopt by reference my entire YouTube uh, channel, Last Prophet Ronald, Prophet Ronald Dwayne Whitfield, to prove that the claims against us, this will get me people in federal court now. Because I'm pursuant to Title 18, United States Code Section 1621 or Section 1624, and pursuant to Title 28, United States Code Section <coughs> 1746, I, Ronald Dwayne Whitfield, a person of sound mind, competent, and over age 21, <coughs> uh, have, uh, uh, say that what I'm now saying is true and correct and not misleading, subject to the penalties of perjury. I state under the penalty of perjury that the claims against my wife and against myself of child abuse as alleged all the claims of child abuse are, 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 are fraud, fake, false. They file, I, they file a fraud. Well, let me keep it to the issue. They, they, <coughs> they file, a, for example, world, they file a, see, LBJ Hospital, for the, we, this is not our first rodeo. In, in 2016, two days after our child was born, my wife was on her phone. Uh, I guess on Facebook or Instagram, 
And I was talking to the nurse who was in the room. And she said to me, because I had told her that uh, I want to go home and take a bath. And she was like, okay, well, sir, if you be gone for longer than two hours, then um, we'll come and get the baby. Or I'll come and get the baby and take him to the nurses while mom is asleep or whatever. Something like that so she can rest or whatever. And my wife heard something about somebody coming to take our baby. She went smooth off saying, bitch, you got me fucked up. And the, the elderly, I, this is what, you know, this is what my wife was saying. So, you know, I'm not cursing. I'm just, you know, she, she just made a mistake. And so the nurse was, was offended that she had been called a B word. And uh, they retaliated. The doctors come running. Security come running. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, and you know, they had, um, you know, talk, you know, they went out and talked about it. They <coughs> saw that that was no problem. But next thing I know, about 30 minutes later, or an hour later, CPS is there claiming that they are investigating. His name is Melvin Frederick, that he's investigating a, a claim of child abuse. Child abuse, and I've got him recorded. And so, and he, and see, he's one of them type of persons, he's not like. Willing to lie. He's already, uh, he closed the case side. Uh, he, they said that my wife had, <coughs> they lied, <coughs> made a false report of child abuse, saying that my wife, now remember, my wife called the nurse a, a bitch, but CPS, uh, the, the nurse, uh, uh, lied and said that my wife had tested positive for drugs, for drugs, illegal drugs. So, uh, look at the affidavit. See, we can prove what we alleged because Paul Gonzalez, who I talked about in another video earlier today, uh, you know, he made his affidavit. He he relates all what happened by going into their system and stating that uh, my wife uh, had been tested. Uh, he had, you know, this is Paul Gonzalez talking about the case too. So by thankfully, we can prove what we're saying here. Uh, Paul Gonzalez in his affidavit of removal, which is what, a year later, I guess, on uh, Monday, May 8, 2017, he files with the court an affidavit and he makes mention that the first referral of a child abuse, he explains that uh, that was the incident and that my, it was reported that my wife had tested positive for drugs and that she had mental issues. Well, had mental issues, you know, that's not. Uh, uh, claim of child abuse. That's not child abuse because she has no issue, but they were alleging that she was testing positive. She had tested positive for drugs. So he caused her to be retested and our baby. And my wife tested negative for drugs. Read the affidavit. And so, but was these, was this nurse indicted? Was she prosecuted? Because this is against Texas law. Uh, they call it false report of child abuse. They indict you for that. They don't indict her or nothing. She get away with that. The second time uh, CPS is called, I call CPS. Uh, my wife invented or modified a fan. She wanted to put it on the market against my uh, counsel to not do so, that it was a scam. They're trying to get <coughs> your money, and plus we need to pay our <laughs> bills. She went against what I said. It, in fact, turned out to be a scam. She gave them $500, and she, uh, her invention, uh, modification, <coughs> was exposed. They got that too. So she ended up going to her mom, borrowing to borrow two hundred dollars so we could pay our light bill because it's not gonna pay itself. And so her mom was like, "Is Caden with you?" And I guess she was like, "Yeah, <coughs> okay. Well, you stay until I get there. I'll give you the money. But let me stay there because you know I don't want my. I didn't want my her mother and I were, were not getting along. So uh, I like I let her mother know that you a grandmother." God gave Caden to Brandy, and he gave Caden to me, not to you, not to my mama, not to my daddy. So he's not coming over here. I don't like the way you act. I'm not like penalizing you or, or retaliating against you, but I'm telling her that my child is to be raised a certain way, such as yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Uh, none of that harm. Huh? He will show respect to his mother, to his father, to his grandmother on both sides. And he's not coming you up. Get up. He's not coming up like that. I didn't come up like that. He's not coming up like that. And so we wouldn't see an eye to eye. Anyway, um, she, anyway, she, um, she, so I, he, my child just wasn't free to go to her house like that. So uh, what happened is this. Uh, 
So she told my wife to hold tight until, uh, you know, hold on until she got there. And so I don't know all this. I'm thinking that, you know, my wife is, you know, going to move out and divorce me or whatever. Well, hey, if that's what, you know, I'm going to believe I'm against divorces. I don't know what's going on here. My baby, she won't give me my baby. So I call CPS. Go get my baby. Go get my baby. CPS don't answer the phone. I can't get CPS on the phone. So I end up calling the Houston Police Department. The whole Houston Police Department come out, and I'm telling them that I had my, you know, my, I had told them, my neighbor had told me that, you know, my wife's mother had one time lived with me, and that uh, she, my neighbor, thought that uh, maybe my wife's mom was selling drugs. And so I told the police that she was selling drugs, and her boyfriend, too, I, you know, <coughs> and, uh, and I get my baby up out of there. Police refused to go get my baby up out of there, but they have the authority and the duty to do so. They didn't. Police officer wouldn't do it, so I called for another unit, and he still would not get my baby out of there. By the time CPS come out, um, let me t pause this for a minute. Resuming video. So um, I work for this millionaire, a friend of mine. I uh, need to get him to help me get word out to to president some i need people to help me get word to the president to turn to general and i'm i know things gonna change then but i'm hoping things will change with just you judges because you know you taking somebody's baby and i guess for these judges that have gotten into the habit of what they do that take it's not a like jim uh, i keep wanting to say jim like uh attorney general uh james uh william Barr said about th them spying on then candidate President Trump or elect President Trump is a big deal. Taking somebody's child from them, and especially on false reported child abuse, is a big deal too. When, when the repeat world is getting the habit of taking poor people's children who has no who have no voice, and they get these old railroad attorneys, and it's just a sham procedure and these people and only i'm sure only the, and president trump has signed this law uh i was in jail on the day they yeah that's a whole different issue there keeping families together uh, uh family first uh prevention service act something like that he signed this into law on february 9 i believe or 8 2018 making it extremely hard for them to adopt to put my child up but they violating all the law so that's a great see let me get this out first too and i'll come back to where i was my rights were not terminated, world. Your rights were not terminated, Mr. Whitfield? No, sir. What you mean? He terminated the rights. He, at least he tried. He didn't even get the, he, he, he specifically uh, wanted to terminate the rights of the alleged father. The prosecutor requested that he terminate the rights of the presumed father. My wife and I were married exactly 79 days before my child was born. My child is not what they call a bastard or an illegitimate child. He was born to a mom and dad, legally, lawfully married. Our marriage license support approved, and also in Texas, unless uh, a person has established paternity, a man, his name will not go on the birth certificate. So my child's name was always on the birth certificate, and we've always had a marriage license, but they committed crime by coming to court claiming that they couldn't find a marriage license. So what? What that? Even if that were true, and they, how can you not find in your own system? Your own system, you lying. But even if true, that does not mean, and they know it, that since you say you couldn't find a marriage license, that we were not married. You asked us were we married, we told you we were married, then we were married. We told you an oath. My wife, we were on the oath, didn't we? Okay, then. They want me to be uh, like Candace Owens is talking about. They don't want the father in the home. The government penalizes you. The federal government penalizes you for if you get married and you receive SSI benefits and you get married. Okay, now don't get married. But if you do, we're going to penalize you, reduce your check. I got married anyway. So that must mean I love my wife and I love my child. I know I'm going to get penalized. I have to report it. We wait about four or five months before we, we report it. And they penalized us by... You know, not penalized, but they, they, they did got their back pay, and we're done with that. But, yeah, I knew they were going to penalize us, but I'm glad I, thank God. Well, I, I, I suggest all oh, you men, marry your, 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 your be married to your uh, child's mother, because you don't know what you're going to go through. What you, you're going to lose your baby. So, you're going to lose your baby anyway, but it's, it'd be, it'll be, Look, man, marry your, marry your woman, man. 
That's all I, I ain't shit. You just don't understand what's going on. As I was saying, my videos will one prove. I was talking about yes, just judges and justices. Because I one reason, I am their legal father. I'm not nah, they got I wouldn't give no DNA. I told the counter, I told the sheriff, we finna fight in here. I ain't giving no DNA. Why? Because he ain't I was not served. Now Judge Phillips has an order issue that neither my wife nor I was served. Now, so when they came to the county jail, they kept having me arrested. To get DNA, I wouldn't give them DNA. I'm ready to fight him. I, because I'm not finna give you this court jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction. I need to be served. I was not served. So the sheriff just left it alone. They didn't bother me no more about it. They came to, to me twice. Now, if in prison, what they'd have done, they'd have sued it up and got that doggone DNA from it. But we'd have been fighting. Yeah, we'd have been fighting. They'd have probably killed me. No, well, you just got to kill me because I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. And that probably gets me in a lot of trouble. I stand up for what I believe in. I've been beat up so many times in handcuffs. But, oh, yes, the sheriff has a video, Justice, so Carl, Mr. Justice Carl Stewart, all members of the Fifth Circuit. Here's another basis that I, uh, you, you, I'm you, asking for you to grant me, grant me leave to file this lawsuit on, on, on the sheriff, too. He didn't choke me. They didn't choke me in handcuffs because I won't give them my blood pressure. At the very hospital that made these, the very, they end up taking me to the very hospital.